right, pay attention class. Quiet. Beyond the Edge, a sequential entertainment podcast, series two, episode five. I repeat, series two, episode five. Written by Terry Dre and Callum Verici. Stop sniggering, boy. It's the MasterChef Finals, coming to you this week from Leith, a small fishing village near Edinburgh. And this week, our best-ever home cooks are back. First up is Mad Jaffa from Nidri. All right, I'm a skimmy drug dealer and a a pit bull breeder, Ken, and uh, now I'm a MasterChef finalist. I never thought I'd ever get to say that like say Ken. Also in the competition this week, Tea Leaf Lil. No. And the kind of lassie that heads up the tune every Saturday to nick some clothes off of the clothes shops and that. And I've never even boiled an egg. But I do a mean Chinese, eh? A number six and 17 from our local takeaway. But I think it's time for me to shine in the kitchen. And last, and certainly least, Henry Soulman Campbell. This competition really, like, lights my fire inside, Ken, what I mean? And I really want to get pushed as far as I can with regards my culinary skills, eh? And if I don't win, I'll introduce these two southern twats to my collection of nice shiny saws and that. Tonight, our three finalists will have to impress judges John and Greg with their own creation from ingredients that they chose themselves. It's finals day, Greg, and you and I have different expectations about this competition at this stage. Once they put their heart and soul into it, it becomes more and more important for them to win. One slip up, and they're gone. That ball's won 50 up. Greg, mate, that's kind of obvious. Who wrote that for you? I did. Got no help from nobody, I did. Pictures only 50p. You're not the most erudite, are you? Watch it, John, or you'll be getting at least ain't pumped up to throat and as your father. Get your pears ready for eating. You don't know what erudite means, do you, Greg? All morning, you, John. All swing for ya. Don't mess with me. I'm a barra boy from Covent Garden, and I'll mess you up, son. Hello, I'm Finley Hayden, and welcome to Celebrity Bathrooms. This week, I'm in... <gasps> Simon Cowell's bathroom, yes I am! And it's as if I'm on the stage getting ready to sing my wee hair to... Oh, well, I say bathroom, but it's really the, the downstairs toilet, so I'm, I'm so not allowed upstairs in the master bathroom. Aye, that's what the butler called it, the master bathroom. I ask you posh or wit, and I, he's got a butler, two maids, a cook, and three live-in barbers and a man to hold it on standby. I can barely get to the hairdressers once a fortnight, never mind having three of them on call all the time, but hey-ho, this is about the celebrities and their bathrooms. It's not about me, is it? No. Although, looking round this scrawny wee cupboard that the butler called a closet with a loo paper sitting on the cistern, doesn't feel maybe enthusiasm for the rest of the house. I will say this, though. I didn't realise that Simon Cowell was so into drag racing, and I don't mean the RuPaul kind. Put it this way. There's a Cobra Monica Pro seat here, specially adapted to fill the toilet. Then there's folding out steering wheels, gear sticks and pedals. I don't even want to think about what he gets up to in here. I mean, I've got the last three months of Marie Claire's and I thought I was being all that, you know? I, I, do, like, I do like all the pictures of the motors with the smoking tyres and the colours of those dragsters are really fab. That's what the motors are called, dragsters. But the full mural of Simon Cowell draped over the bonnet of a 1962 Ford Zephyr Chop Dragster in black with him wearing a white bodysuit with red piping is just a wee bit too much. Oh, right, that's me getting told to hurry up. Well, that's another one of these wee morsels of the rich and famous and how they spend a penny. I wonder where I'll end up next time in celebrity bathrooms. See you! <clears throat> Lee, 
They tell me that Glasgow drinkers are the hardiest in the world. Well, I got 500 of your Scottish pounds that not one of you can drink 10 pints of your finest beers and double measures of your finest malt whiskey chasers one after the other. Uh, not one of you can take up the challenge? Oh, wow. Well. Barkeep, I'll have a pint of your best beer. Can I, uh, help you, sir? Uh, yes, well, well, I hope so. You see, my laptop seems to have stopped working. I was wondering if you could take a look at it. Well, this is a laptop repair shop, sir, so... <laughs> so, yes. Ah, yes, I... I see the problem. Your laptop is uh, is full of internet. Sorry, the the internet. You see all this uh, black gunk oozing out of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, your laptop is completely full up with the internet. Yes. Uh, okay, but but I, I don't understand. Well, when you spend time on the internet, it can gunge up your laptop. Uh, when was the last time that you had it purged? I'm I'm sorry, purged. Or how about the the paraphoretic polarity inducers? When was the last time you had those debunked? I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure you're not. Yeah, I'm sure you're not. Uh, see, the Azerbaijan interface link has been tactically terminated by way of the multisynaptic holocapacitors. Oh, my goodness. Can you fix it? <laughs> As I said, sir, this is a laptop repair shop, so... So, yes... I can fix it. How long will it take? Well, I'll just have to splurge, then uh, regulate the sensing hollow stanners. So, so come back next week. Can you not do it quicker? Uh, 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 come back next week. No, no. Yeah, be off with you. Go, go on. Yeah, yeah there's one born every minute. Oh, excuse me, pal. I'll take you up on that challenge of ten pints of beer and malt whiskey chasers, know what I mean? Ah, finally. Set them up, barman. Aye, right you are. <coughs> I don't know who you are. I don't know what you want. I do have a very particular set of skills. Skills I have acquired over a very long career. I will find your star sign and where it ascends in your house. I will align the sun, moon, and all the planets. Make no mistake, I will predict your horoscope. Well, I stand corrected. Glasgow drinkers are the hardiest. But, uh, tell me, sir, where did you go for the ten minutes you were gone? Oh, I was in the pub in the corner. I had to see if I could date first, no. Nigella, I haven't seen you in a while. No, I was seconded to the Market Street office. Just got back. All oh, right. I heard there was a new manager there, new broom and all that. I don't know about a new broom, but she certainly knows how to put everyone in a canter, that's for sure. She's not taking any flack from no one. A bit of hard work and drive didn't hurt anyone, though. I don't mind a bit of hard work, Bridget, but she was riding the staff a bit too hard for my liking. There has to be a middle ground, you know? Well... It works out in the end, doesn't it? She got rid of a third of the workforce. Winnied it down to the core staff. Don't you mean whittled? I know what I mean. She's just a big, fat bully. No dress sense to speak of. Always had that same coat on. More like a cape, really. And then there was the chair incident. Chair incident? Aye. I heard on her first day, she sat on her chair and it disintegrated. She couldn't even fit her fat arse in it. And she changed all the food in the canteen. Roughage and no carbs. More vegan than vegetarian. Well, nothing wrong with healthy eating. <laughs> You'll not be saying that when she changes everyone when she's here. She's coming here. Aye. Waste of time, in my opinion. Shutting the stable door and all that. Here, shh. That's her coming now. Hello, I'm Sandra. I, oh, 
Oh, that's an interesting mask you're wearing. So, I'm a hairstylist. Um, what do you do for a living? I'm the bad man. That's amazing. What does that entail? I fight crime wherever it lurks. I vanquish evil where I find it. I know what you mean. I fight evil hairstyles all the time. I don't think it's the same. Last week, for example, this old gin comes into the salon and, my God, you'd think a nest of crows were living in her hair. Completely different to what I do. I said to her, I said, oh, my God, have a group of crows been living in your hair, missus, I said. A murder. What? It's a murder of crows, not a group of crows. <laughs> well, let me tell you, it took, like, more than the allotted hour to fix that nest of squirrels. It's a nest of vipers, not squirrels. They come as a scurry of squirrels. That's interesting. So, if I were to go on a date... Ah, Why am I here? I should never have listened to Robin. He's just a kid. What does he know about relationships? Oh, I'm going to punch him up the throat when I get... Congratulations to all of you on making it to the finals. Now, you've been set a brief to cook home cooking, comfort food, something that you would cook for yourself at home. Hence, comfort food. I'm going to swing for you, John. I don't think that means what you think it means. As I was saying. Trying to say. Cook for yourself at home or cook for a loved one or ordered from a menu in a restaurant or takeaway. Or bought a ready-made meal from a supermarket. Or watched a celebrity TV chef make. Wow. Brilliant. Who was that brief set by, Greg? That brief was set by my Auntie Jean. I love my Auntie Jean. Is she coming in to taste the food, Greg? Don't be stupid, John. She's never left the East End of London. I wouldn't be here either if I didn't get paid squillions of quid for being here. Now get on with it, son. You're all here to make the best meal you can based on the brief of a home-cooked meal. 90 minutes. Let's cook.
Okay, everyone, we'll take a 10 minute break. Please help yourself to refreshments over at the table. How are you getting on there, buddy? Oh, uh, it's amazing. Oh, this is the first time I've, uh, I've ever been to one of these speed dating things. First time, eh? Aye, aye. It, it would normally take me months to have my, my hopes raised and shot down in flames so many times. Hey, is that Batman? It's the Batman. Ah, good morning, Struan. Morning, Captain. How are things this morning? Everything's shipshape and ready to sail soon. Everything is coming along nicely, sir. We have just been given the coordinates for the voyage. All seems to be in order. Looking at the weather report, I predict plain sailing for most of the journey. Excellent! That's... Wait, wait, wait. Most of the journey. Well, once we have passed the south coast of Florida, we can anticipate some choppy waters for a period of time. I, I know, I know. I know, I know how you can get around these types of challenges. But rest assured that I'll do all I can to make you aware of when it's about to hit. Okay. Captain? Uh, I, <laughs> I, I'm fine. Just keep going. What is the ETA for docking? In Hawaii. By my calculations, we are set to arrive between 8 a.m. and 9 a.m. local time next Monday. That being said, though, with the anticipated weather around Florida just now, it could slow us down by another day. Coast Guard to Britannica, we have received word that seas are to intensify around the Florida coast. Proceed with your voyage, but with extreme caution. Reports from other vessels that the waters have gotten that aggressive in parts that their ships almost capsized. I repeat, proceed with extreme caution. Further updates to follow. Out. Captain? Just... this. Give me a minute. I can't believe this food. I asked for a well done sirloin and this is so rare it's trying to run off the plate. How's your fish? I think it's off and the vegetables are cold. Oh, this is the worst meal I've ever had. No, right? We ordered a dry white wine and we got a sweet rosy. Ugh. There's a crawling thing in my side salad. I'm going to complain. Just wait till the waiter comes over. I'll tell her. How's your meal? Everything do you liking, sir, madame? Oh, it, delicious. it's lovely. Absolutely delicious. I can't praise Scoot it enough. Perfection. Compliments to the chef. And the wine is to die for. Evening, Jackie. How you doing? Oh, I've had enough of this place, like... Oh, dear. Remember, it's just a job, eh? Honestly, I thought I'd seen it all in this job, but last night was something else. What happened, like? Get out of hand, did it? It was student night, and you know how the boss likes to go all out for the students, because they spend the money? They pushed the boat out last night. Cheap drinks, all that house and garage music. And he set up the karaoke in the back room. Nightmare. And? Well, there was this one lad that got up and started doing the karaoke, right? I didn't know this, but he had already been on the stage for 20 minutes before I turned up. Ah, right. Was he that drunk that he thought he was a superstar and didn't he want to get off? I wish. Was he the aggressive type, not taking no for an answer and being stubborn about coming off stage and that? No. The types I can handle. Quick headlock and throw them out the fire exit. This was something really special. What happened, like? Well... It turns out that the lad on the stage was dyslexic and singing YMCA. Captain, uh, we're coming out of war. There seems to be a problem with the Heisenberg subspace phaser alignment. What? Well, the gravitational photon banks and forward phase conjugate graviton 
It doesn't seem to be responding, Captain. I have no idea what you're on about, Lieutenant. Can you just get to me in plain English, like? Should I readjust the mnemonic analyzer with a multi-neutral FET matrix? Nope. Didn't catch any of that. Try again, eh? Captain, the flaws and your phaser resonator is offline. You're getting right on my tits. Get a grip, right? Captain, we've got a problem with the Heisenberg engines and the nitrous distribution net and the aluminum matter stream. Oh, for no, you as well. I have absolutely no idea what you're going on about, right? If you don't stop talking all that pish, I'm going to lose it something terrible like. And I mean it. I'm going to kick somebody's head in. Captain! The subspace pulse and transwarped engine nacelle is... Right, it's that's gone. It. I warned you. I told you. Did I not tell you to say it in plain English so that I could understand it? I can't understand the word you guys are saying to me. Darling, I was thinking that maybe we should break up... Oh, thank God you said it. I've been thinking it for months now. In fact, I've been so unhappy since I said I do. It's been a nightmare. The more I get to know you, the more you annoy me. All our friends say it too. They hate you, and have been telling me for years to bin you that you're a waster. Mary thinks you're a loud-mouthed, wine-drinking know-it-all with a laugh that could strip paint. And you're spending far too much money on all that makeup, and it doesn't make much of a difference, I can tell you. I could have had a new car by now, and I've lost count the amount of times I've had a stiletto heel embedded in the sole of my feet because you're so untidy, leaving the room like an assault course for the army cadets. And you know I've always had a thing for your sister Agnes, and she's got a thing for me, so I'm grateful that you brought it up. I feel vindicated and free. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. I was talking about breaking up the sideboard in the garage, because I keep bumping into it. Ah, right. Aye. Okay. You want me just to go and get that now, darling? Aye, I'll just go and get that now. Oh, right then. Thanks. I'm not used to making speeches like, but here goes. I'd like to thank my man, the big lug that he is, for doing this for me. It's not every day you turn 60, darling. Aye, Frank, and thanks for reminding me. No, but seriously, I'd like to thank all my family and friends for, for turning up here the night. Well, hello there. Uh, we bird tailed me that it was someone's birthday the day, and I'm here to help you celebrate it in style. Uh, the name is James Mac McKinley. Uh, but the folks back home call me Bagpipe Jimmy, and I'm a quarter scotch on my old dad's side. Uh, so that means I get to wear the tartan and uh, play my bagpipes. It's uh, it's in my blood. Do you can how to play the bagpipes like? Never had one lesson, or yin lesson, as you guys say. Never needed to. It's in my scotch blood. Aye, how you doing? Uh, Give us a bottle of lager, mate. By the way, my mate crashed his motorbike today. You're joking? No. He has slight brain damage, broken leg, sprained ankle, crushed left hand, and a completely blind in one eye. No wonder he crashed it then. Night dice first, toy life low, up ye can. Oh, did he come all that sexist pish with me? I've had bigger, maybe no uglier, but bigger than you for breakfast and shat them out for afternoon tea, ken what I mean? I don't know what she just said, John. I don't think she wants to be first, Greg. Okay then, well, Mad Jaffa, up ye can. Aye, alright then. So, Mad, what have you made for us that is your homemade dish? Right, I've done you a bowl of noodles with chicken and mushroom and chopped up with veggies, like say, and a kind of creamy sauce, eh? Topped off with a soya sauce dew. And you've presented it in a plastic container? Aye. Bold. Wow. I think it's a statement. I love it. I love it. The way you fuse them Asian and Japanese spices. Amazing. Fantastic. 
Wow. It's a pot noodle. A chicken and mushroom pot noodle. I? Or have to say, I love it. Wow. And serving it up in that plastic container saves on the washing up. It's inspiring. Now then, let's have the next home cook chef, Henry Stallman Campbell. Up ye come. Right, till you've got your bony ass up there now. Although there's no need, the prize is already mine's like. He's a character, ain't he? Right then, to leave Lil for the second time. Up ye come. So, tea leaf lil, what homemade delicacy have you got for us to try then, my love? You can stick that kind of pish talk up your jacksy, son. Wow. This has to be my favourite home-cooked meal of all time. I have to say, this is one of my favourites. Mince and tatties, as you like to say here in Scotland. Tell us how you done this Math water in dish, Lil. I uh, nicked a tin uh, M&S mints, the premium stuff like, and shoved it in the pan to heat it up. Meanwhile, I tore out my packet of smash. The granules, though, because the powder smash is rubbish, and then I whacked it on the plate. In taunting. Again, I don't think that means what you think it means. Shut it, John, or you'll get a slap, mate. Now then, let's have the final finalist, I hope, Henry Sawman Campbell. Up you come. Here you go. This is my version of what my mum used to put down to us like and a favourite in my house when I was wee. This is the winning dish like, no doubt, and you's better agree with me, right? Wow, what can I say about this dish? This has to be my go-to home-cooked meal, the ever-classic macaroni cheese. It packs a pan, so it does. Classic macaroni cheese, right enough. One might say that you've been real crafty with your choice. What do you mean by that, you southern twat? Just I've seen this before. Isn't it just a box of Kraft cheesy macaroni? Aye, what of it likes you? Well, you boil the pasta, then open the packet of powdered cheese and add that to the pasta. Aye. Did you add any butter or cream or even milk to the mix? No. It looks great. It will taste great. Now, I'm not a chef, but... I love it. You love everything. If you can eat it, you love it. I've had it with you, John. You're going to get a punch up the throat, mate. Come on then, Wallace. You think you're hard enough? Oh, I'm hard enough, mate. I may stand hard enough. The craze don't have nothing on me, son. Oh, that's right. Name the names now, they're gone. You're just a barrow boy. Not even good enough to be a greengrocer. Oh, I am a greengrocer. Get your apples, 150 a pound. Great, a pound a bunch. Have I won the prize? Three oranges for 70 pounds. Use the shade Wait a minute, I didn't go up the gin and neck all that stuff for nothing. You can stuff that set to scrap up your crap. Can I interest anyone in some recreational narcotic? No two deer like say, can. That was Beyond the Edge, a sequential entertainment podcast. I hope you were listening. There will be a test. Performed by Terry Dre, Callum Berechi, Deborah White, Lynn Morris, Rob Crosby, Davy Lolly, Robert I. Crawford, George Bowers, Alec Westwood and Matt Mason. Yes, I'm talking about you at the back of the class, sitting over there. Music written and performed by Bob Strachan at Bob Strachan Music, Kevin McLeod and Craig Weald. Produced and created by Terry Dre for Edge of the World Productions. I won't tell you again. Pay attention. Mm-hmm.